All right, we are watching Sweet, who's going to be playing Sigma briefly, then mostly Winston, and a little bit of Orisa at the end. Uh, this is Gold 2 on PC in EU, uh, and is on Servasa. What tank to play against a dedicated tank buster team? At this point, we know the tank counters well enough, we do. Uh, the problem is, when the entire tank uh, team picks tank counters, what would be a safe pick as a tank? I had a match today against Zarya to start, so I went against Winston against their dive slash supports. After first point, they bring out the Reaper, and shortly after a Bastion, at the end, they took a May and a Brig to shut down any dives. The Reaper was getting no value, just Wing me after getting it without getting it to range. However, the entire team built around keeping me from playing the game was just demoralizing. Against Zarya, Reaper, Bastion, May, Brig, Life Weaver, what tank could work? Winston stopped working once the Brig came out, got healed whenever I dived the lone target. Orisa could not get past Zarya, and D.Va would be shut down by May slash Brig. Out of these, D.Va with off angles is my best bet, but they would go Symmetra or something else again. Against this much indication, what is the best approach slash pick for a tank player? Um, and then you said, not a VOD request, but context in the above story. I, the thing is that this is going to end up being a VOD review because people ask questions like this all the time on the subreddit, right? They're like, hey, like, what do I do against like this certain lineup of this particular comp, blah, blah, blah. The overwhelming majority of the time, especially if the games are diamond or below, the issue is not like the particular composition you're facing. The issue is that you're not playing well enough with the hero that you're picking. And this often happens to people who have a very small number of main heroes, and they feel countered by whatever the enemy team is, and they swap to another hero, and you're like, well, that's not working. But often it's because there's a huge drop-off in skill between your main hero and whatever that other hero is. So, for example, in this game, I, I, you know, I don't really see a lot of your... your um your Sigma gameplay here, but like your Winston gameplay is a problem. Like it's like mechanically a big problem. And we're gonna like illustrate that over the course of this game. Cause I think Winston was actually a really, really good pick. So I think your your switches, like in terms of who you switch to was good. Like I think that it was the right call to switch from Sigma against Winston. Winston Sigma's a really bad, uh, really bad against this composition. Um, I think it was the right call to switching to Winston. I think it was the right call switching off Winston once they they went like Reaper, Bastion, etc. Um, I. I just think you need to play the heroes better. It's not about the composition, it's about who you're like how how you actually play your heroes. So let's let's watch through this. So for starters, we're coming in. Um, the reason why Sigma's gonna be bad, first of all, I don't think Sigma is good at any of the dynamic maps. So typically that is all of the flashpoint maps, and I would say some of the push maps, uh, and all of the control maps. I think Sigma's generally a bad pick because he just really needs the fight to be very linear. He wants it to be very like north-south, like just one line versus like different angles, like, you know, weird positions, etc. Sigma's really bad at that because he's completely immobile and his like he doesn't do a lot of damage, so he can't take advantage of things really well, and his team can be dove upon. So a dive is very, very common in those in, in all of those maps. Dive and rush, I would say, is very common in those uh, types of situations. So I think for Sigma, unless you can control the terrain, Sigma's generally a bad pick. So I think Sigma is a bad pick here, and I would never open Sigma in this situation. But fine. Whatever. But beyond that, I think Sigma's fine against Zarya, right? Sigma's fine against Iliari, Sigma's okay against Life Weavers and Make Difference. It's the Genji and the Tracer that are gonna be a huge problem to you if you stay on Sigma, and that's why you switch off. But that's fine. So we're gonna come out here, you're playing against Zarya, right? First rule of Zarya is how many bubbles does she have? Right now I'd assume she has two. So that's bubble number one. Okay, great. Ten seconds are counting right now. So basically it's nine point seven right now. So we think ten seconds is when her next bubble is gonna be ready, and she has one in reserve, okay? So we're fighting right now. You throw this, this the shield, you do not need the shield. This is a bad shield. Why is this a bad shield? You're full health right now with your supports. You do not need shield right now. It's a very common mistake of Sigma's to low ranks to use shield to block all damage. You do not want to block all damage as, as Sigma. The best Sigmas are not the Sigmas that, that mitigate 100% of enemy damage, because it's not possible. The best Sigmas are the ones that take damage when they can take damage safely, and they block damage when they can't take damage safely. So in this situation, I don't want to use the shield. I want to use the shield as my ace in the hole later in the fight when things get getting more serious and I'm in danger. And we're going to see that happen pretty soon. So I would not have the shield up at all right now. I would, in fact, release the shield if I'm still here. I don't care right now. Zarya has no energy. I don't care about damage from her. I can just put, attack the, the supports, right? attack Zarya, whatever I can get. That's fine. I do not want the shield to burn down. Shield's going to go all the way down. Now it's broken. Okay. Now that shield is broken, I need to be careful. If the Zarya was like a D.Va, for example, I could still be somewhat aggressive here, but if she's anybody who can attack through my grasp, like a Reinhardt, like a Zarya, then I have to, or Doomfist, right? I have to be very, very careful in the situation. So I can't play out here, I have to play close now. So the fact that your shield broke basically single-handedly means that you can no longer contest the point. I now need to play here, which means I'm probably gonna lose this fight. 
such a little thing right now. It's like, technically, everyone's full health, no one's gonna die. The fact that I let my shield break here basically means, if this was like GM level play, I'm not gonna win this fight. I've already screwed up enough. Similar thing for Zarya, right? If Zarya, she, she pops her bubbles, doesn't get any energy, she's lost. At GM, you cannot recover from that on a consistent basis. It's like 80% plus of the time, you're gonna lose the fight there. So you made a big mistake letting your shield break. And again, we're gonna see why in a second. Because you have grasp. Again, if Zarya wasn't in the game, she was replaced with another hero who you can absorb damage, you could still be aggressive here. But since it's Zarya and I don't have shield, I must now play safe. Safe means playing a corner. All right, so we're attacking. Now you see why Sigma's rough in this situation because I can't land shots. This is a bad rock. Why is this a bad rock? Well, let's see. What am I trying to rock here? I see the tracer. She's right there. And I try to rock her. Rock has an incredibly long cooldown, or uh, sorry, uh, wind up in terms of they can see it. And number two, it's a tracer, so she's a small target. Number three, tracer has blinks, all right? Number four, this is a long distance to travel. Like, for all these reasons, this rock never lands, right? Even if it was on target, the tracer's just gonna blink out of this. This is a really bad rock. This is another great example of just like what lower rank, a, a common mistake for lower rank sigmas is they throw rock for no reason, right? They're like, oh yeah, this could work. It's not gonna work. <laughs> Save rocks for like guaranteed or nearly guaranteed kills or to disrupt the enemy position, or to interrupt an enemy ability. Those are the only three reasons to use rock. Never just chuck rock out there to, to throw it, because now you have 10 seconds where you can't throw a rock. All right, sorry, Bubbles. This is fine. I would, I would shoot through this, right? Like, it, at some point, you're going to have to burn down. She's going to get full energy either way. You're going to see the Reaper drop right now. So I would, at this point, right, be rotating back, because the Reaper is going to go after your backline. You see how everybody's looking at the Reaper? So I could just shift to this corner, attack the Reaper one shot, and then focus on keeping myself alive from this angle. All right, they're beating you down. Great, you shield. All right, you have no shield, right? You have 17 health on your shield because you let your shield break. This is the moment where you need shield, okay? This is what you're saving shield for is right now. Oh God, Zarya's high energy. I'm getting focused down by three people. Pop shield now. This is where you shield. Shield buys you a few more seconds so that your team notices what's happening, what's going on. See, the Yara turns right now. The Yara heals for 120 health a second. If you buy her one second here to turn around, she heals you up and you're totally fine. So this is 100% on you, okay? The Reaper flanked, distracted your team, and then because you're out of position and you've wasted your abilities, you've wasted shield and you've wasted rock, because rock, for example, here could also save you. You rock the Zarya here and you pop grasp and you're good and you survive. But because you've wasted all your abilities, you're gonna die here. This has nothing to do with enemy composition. This is just your own like mistakes on Sigma. Okay, let's jump forward. You switch up Winston here uh, to Winston here, which is a good call, that's fine. All right. Traits are Genji is out here, right? That's fine, zap, 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 right? I would jump this, why not, right? I jump in, one of two things happens, okay? Well, actually, uh, yes, one of two things happens. Number one, the Genji stays and I kill him, right? Or he's like slow to turn and I kill him. Excellent, obviously we get a pick, we're probably gonna win the fight. Unlikely. Number two is the Genji tries to get away. So, the Genji probably has dash here, he does. So the Genji dashes away. However, the Zarya probably is gonna get nervous because if I dive into the Genji right now, I'm gonna do like 80 damage on landing, right? 50, 50 from the jump, 30 damage from melee, that's gonna nearly kill the Genji. Though he'll, she's gonna dash out and probably not die here, but the Zarya's gonna get nervous and she's gonna bubble him, which is great. That means I've already taken out one of the Zarya bubbles for nothing, literally nothing. <laughs> that's what you wanna be doing, right? This is an opportunity right now for you to have gone, but fine. Trace is here, zap, 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 okay, cool. So you're gonna try to stretch the fight. I think this is okay, right? I think it would also have been fine just going in from the front too, but I think this is okay if you wanna do this. So right now, I need to be decisive as Winston, right? I need to be like, oh, I gotta go in. The problem is your team is kind of scattered over here. This is what happens if you take too long to go in. So my team's not ready, in which case I need to play and, and just sit at the corner. But if I'm going in, I gotta go in. So watch how you're gonna take 150 plus damage right now doing nothing. This is bad. This is what you don't want to do as Winston. As Winston, there's no reason for me to just drift in front of this doorway like this and take a ton of damage. It doesn't help me, right? It does help the enemy team. It gives them all ult charge. Not good. Not a thing that I want to do. Okay, so you decide to finally go in right now. Is it the right time to go in? Well, let's look. Junkrat's here. Soldier's still rotating. I think you could probably wait another three to five seconds here instead of pushing in. I think you could just sat at this doorway and just deflected the tracer and waited and then gone in. I think that would have been a much better timing. But if we're gonna go in right now, this is bad. So you're gonna see that you land well short of the Iliari. All right, so we'll slow it down just a little bit. See, this is a huge gap. And as a result, the Iliari barely takes any damage, right? So she's gonna take like 25 damage here instead of taking 50 damage from the landing plus 30 from the melee is 80 damage right away that she has to deal with. You do half of that, 
Like, not even half of that? Because your mechanics are no good. You needed to aim higher here to jump in. Right? So, right here, I think you also jump, which throws you off a little bit. But you need to get deeper in here, because you can definitely jump all the way over here, no problem. You need a higher arc to get in here. But as a result, you now knock the Eligari away, and the Life Weaver is able to heal and save. So, this starts the Winston portion of this review. Your Winston mechanics are a big problem. As Winston, you need to be able to jump anywhere you want within a meter, like maybe two meters of exactly where you want. So for example, if I'm jumping here, where I want to jump, where I want to jump is right here. Land, zap, 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 okay? If the Life Weaver or the uh, Iliari drops, great, I can follow and try to kill it. Or, if she's like, really can't get out of the way, then I can go for the Life Weaver. If she backs up to the Life Weaver, because I'm going to bubble here too to prevent healing, if they're together, I then turn and zap both. And then I can virtually guarantee you're going to win the fight here, because Zarya is really out of position. But because you do this, you see, you're, you just knock them out of range, and now you're not doing anything. Instead of doing 120 damage a second, 60 to both, I'm now doing zero damage a second, and this is what causes you to lose fights. If I'm just there, just zapping both, because their damage is negligible to me, right? Who, who cares? As a Winston, I can just zap both of these two, just chase, 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 and they're going to constantly pop all their abilities trying to get away. That denies healing the rest of the team, and then it's a four on three against the rest of their team, and my team probably wins that. That's problem number one. Your jump position is bad. Number, or jump landing spot is bad. Number two, there's no reason to pop bubble this early. No one's even attacking you. Like, this bubble does nothing, except for the Tracer. Who cares? Tracer can zap me. That's fine. You know, it is what it is. But my supports can see me. Like, it's fine. Like, it's not an issue here. I'd rather save the bubble for much deeper in. A very common mistake for Winston's at lower rank is they pop bubble way too early. You can take some damage. Don't worry about trying to block all damage. So at this point, your chance of winning the fight is actually very, very low, but it's gonna. this is going to continue on for a while. So you zap the Genji. Fine. All right. Who's killable right now? Well, you just saw the Genji dash, which means Genji has no dash. He has no survivability right now, which means if the Genji is not visible to supports, he can die right now. So you could, for example, turn, finish shooting the, the Genji here, right? Run with them, reload, keep zapping, zap, 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 and he dies, right? Or the support Life Weaver finally gets to him. Great. Now I jump in, I hit both of them, kill the Genji, kill the Life Weaver. It might sound... Like, you might be like, oh, that sounds easier than it. It really is that easy. <laughs> like, if you don't believe me, you can watch, like, the, the, the enormous amount of Winston content that is, exists, like, on my channel for both, like, my Winston gameplay guides, my, like, Masters and GM level, like, Winston gameplay. Like, it happens all the time. All you need to know is who do I need to target right now. So the correct person target initially was the supports, right? On this dive-in, you need to go for both supports here, right? Zapping both of them. But even then, okay, fine, whatever, right? You zap... Go after Genji, fine. Right now, you want to go for the Genji. So I want to, I would reload, right? Fall, or I can follow him here, or I could reload and short jump into him. You also have no ability to short jump, and we're gonna see that in a second. But fine, we're gonna ignore the Genji. Okay, I think this is the wrong call, but all right, it's fine. It, we're still a winnable situation here. So what you want to do is you want to short jump into both supports, land, do 50 damage to both, melee one for 30 more damage, and then zap both of them down for 120 damage a second until they die. There's nothing they can do to stop this. <laughs> Like, they have literally no burst healing. Uh, the uh, Life Weaver has, has, has 50 health, right? And then the uh, Yari can also heal for, I think, 50 without burst. That's not going to be enough damage. Like, you're just going to go here, and you're going to kill them all. The, the Zarya here cannot do enough damage to you to stop you, and neither can the supports. The great thing about Winston Dance Cop is that everyone in this team does really little damage. So you can just run hog wild over anybody you want. Like, anyone you want to die besides the Zarya dies. All you got to do is focus them down, and they will die. But the problem is, you see how you're not jumping right now? You're losing this burst damage. And then you get spooked because you get trapped in no man's land of no bubble, right? For the record, you could keep you could keep fighting this. You can just walk forwards right now and you're all set. Like no one's even shooting this pylon, which is healing you for like 30 or 40 health a second. But then you jump out. This is fight losing. Because look, you're almost full health right now. Why are you leaving the fight? Because leaving the fight means it's another six seconds that you can get back in. And now your team has to fight six seconds without you, which is really bad. Your team gives a bunch of space, Zarya gets access to your backline, now you're trying to return to the fight, but you don't even jump on anybody, right? Like, you barely hit the Genji with this, now you're finally tracking two, right? Great, going for the Yari, okay, she gets bubbled, no problem, reload right now. Yep, and you're trying to get out, why are you getting out? You have 517 health, <laughs> like, you gotta go in! Like, instead of jumping out here, right? So, instead of jumping out here, just reload, look, hey, look, the Tracer's super low here. Right? Or the Life Weavers on the right side, completely isolated from the Zarya. I could jump over here. 
right? There's so many options. I could go for the Tracer, I could go for the Zarya, I could go for the Genji. I have so many options here that are not simply leaving the fight. It's super, super bad, right? Stuff like this is what costs you games. Also, right now you're zapping. This is just like such a basic thing, right? Zap, 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 zap. Okay, we're still zapping. So the, the Genji's gonna jump. Just look up. You see how you're not zapping the Genji anymore? You're only zapping the Zarya because you're not looking up. You gotta track in between them so that both of them are getting zapped right now and then get ready to jump to pursue. So you're gonna jump. So this is a bad jump. It's it's like the right idea, but it's a bad jump because I think you see the life is low. The problem is you get too way too much arc. You see how much extra height you get here? You want to do a nice exact distance jump onto Lightweaver. I know it's like, okay, obviously it's not that easy, but the thing is like, if you want to get better at Winston, this is the kind of stuff that's like bread and butter, right? This is like a very basic jump to do as Winston to know exactly how high you're going to get and land there as soon as possible because the fact that it takes you so long gives him time to react to get off. If you had done this much faster, you would have landed on here immediately, done the melee damage, and he instantly dies right now. Because right here, look how high you are, you would be right here if you did it correctly, and you would instantly kill him with the jump. But instead, you don't. And once again, like, your mechanics are costing you, like, the fight, like, over and over and over again. All right, go for the Yari, this is a good call, yep. So, you saw Life Weaver, you're going for the Life Weaver. I don't know that you need to reload there, but... Right, I think you can keep zapping here, like, zap the Tracer, for example. and Because the Tracer's, like, reasonably low here. You can zap the Tracer and definitely make her life hard. Go for the Life Weaver, okay. So, they popped Tree. So you really want to get that short jump burst damage right now because you're not going to be able to out heal the out damage the tree otherwise, right? Just one quick, right, look down, hold back, jump in, you hit the top of the or hit the side of the tree, land on him, melee. Maybe you burst him down. Probably not. Ah, it's close. Probably not though. But like that's the best you can do right now. So pedal platform goes up. All right, you want to chase here. Okay, generally right idea. The problem is you hit the bottom side of the platform, so you just need to get get to the side of it and then jump up and then you're good. But once again, another failed jump, which means you're getting no value right now. Like, you can't miss a jump with Winston. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you want to climb, you can never miss a jump as Winston. No one's telling you to make, like, difficult jumps, like, oh, jumping through, like, a sniper window or something tiny. Like, these are pretty basic jumps that you're consistently failing to execute, right? That's, like, the biggest reason why you're losing this game. It has nothing to do with the enemy comp. I'm going to follow Life Weaver. I just note, though, you've lost so many people right now that there's no reason that you can win this fight. This is currently a four-on-two right with one coming in so there's no reason for you to win this fight right now i would just die here and reset or give up the point but okay whatever i, I would say the enemy team is doing a terrible job of killing you <laughs> like they're definitely missing a ton of shots so you popped you pop primal what do you do with the primal basically nothing i think you do knock the zarya off which which is valuable that's definitely valuable but besides that you're just kind of swinging the, i think you're nervous about leaving the point which i understand but like this primal rage gives you very little value Sorry's back on the point, you knock her off again. It's another example where you should jump into Genji right away. Like, you're definitely way too afraid of doing the short jump. Right? You need to do the short jump there to burst the Genji. You try to kill the pylon. Still around here, chilling, and then you finally die. So, what just happened here? You wasted your ultimate, and thankfully there's no time element in um or like overall time element here because that was a really, really bad attempt. But you wasted your ultimate, fed them another thousand plus health points of ult charge for nothing, right? Like, you had no chance of winning that fight because it was four and two. So you're not tracking, you're not tracking how many people are alive when you pop this ultimate. Again, it was very obvious to me watching the kill feed that you had no chance of winning this fight. Like, this is not possible. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's what it is. I guess the Yari theoretically could have killed another one here, but like, I would never expect to win this fight. I think that would be, it's just not, it's not a statistically good play. I'd rather save my ultimate to make sure I win the next fight. Okay. We're going to fast forward here. You are going to win the second fight, or a second point, so we're going to kind of skip through this real quick. But they've already started to rotate to Reaper. Please melee to finish people. As a reminder, if you didn't know, every box of health is 25 health. So as soon as they're on one box, you can melee and insta-kill them. So, we've captured, now it's 1-1. One, one. Bastion, Bastion's popped Assault Form. Okay, fine. Wait out Assault Form. Like, whatever I need to do, I need to wait it out. This is a little dangerous because the Bastion could turn on me. How much time does he have left? He's got one second. Actually, this is fine. Yeah, you follow him. So, 
when you jump here with Life Weaver, just just tail him the whole time, right? Stay like right on top of him, and be like, okay, you're going backwards. Fine, I'm gonna follow you backwards. Like in game, it's easier when like it's awkward for me to do this replay review. It should not be that hard for you to like to, to stay with the Life Weaver, <laughs> because this this time you're wasting is really really bad. So you've lost three right now. You definitely should just get out. This was a mistake. Which way to get out? <laughs> Um, I probably would be looking for a jump this way and getting around this pillar and resetting my team. But you do manage to get out eventually. A good example of mechanics issues again. So watch your try to jump this way. So you're going to see how you collide into the top. Like this is not what a gold tank looks like. <laughs> a gold Winston. <laughs> like you can't, you can't be doing this at gold. Right? Which makes me guess that Winston's probably not one of your most played tanks because you just feel, you look super uncomfortable maneuvering the map as Winston, which is not acceptable if you want to win games. Right? You jump over here. Again, one thing to note is because you're so low, you have zero presence. Because you have zero presence, you can't slow down or stop them at all. That exposes your soldier. Your soldier's going to die. You're still, like, you're constantly running. You're just in constant run mode. You're not adding any value to your team. And as a result, their team is able to now control the point, and your team has to fight to go to take it right now. So let's think right here. When was the last assault form? We saw it right now. Do, 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 do. Right? Okay, he's done right now. I have 10 seconds, technically 12, but it's easier to remember 10. I have 10 seconds to do whatever I want. First, first of all, I don't think I'm going to win this fight anyway because I lost one. But let's ignore that for the moment. So I, I have 10 seconds to win the fight because Bastion without assault form is very, very vulnerable. Right? Not necessarily to being killed, not by me at least. I do very little damage with Winston, but his team is now vulnerable. So I have 10 seconds right now. My jump's coming up. Who do I jump? Well, I jump the supports, right? This is another short jump, right? Or you can do a medium jump in and flip it. So a really strong technique is to jump behind them and then turn 180 in the air, land and knock them towards your team. And then I can zap all three of them here while I put down bubbles, zap, 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 right? Do a ton of damage. Oh, bash and pop the salt form. Great. I can use, you know, um, Primal now to finish off supports and then get out or kill the Bastion even. I got a lot of options here. But what do you do? You jump to an empty corner. This throws games. <laughs> like, this can't happen. So you're very lucky they walked into you because there's real, really no reason for them to walk towards you at all. But regardless, you're not, like, really doing anything right now. They all get out of range, right? Bastion Assault Form is coming up any second now. So let's, let's track it. Okay, so from right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know Bastion Assault Form coming up any second now. Eight, nine, ten. I, whatever I'm doing, I have to either be getting out or winning this fight because the Bastion's about to top, pop Assault Form. How close is he? Three seconds away, right? Three, three to two seconds away. So the timing is very close here. All right? You pop Assault Form here. Bastion, or you pop Primal. Bastion has Assault Form. You do kill, do a decent job juggling there, right? So your team reses one, managed to kill one, but now you get shredded by the Bastion. Go after the Yari. I think you are eventually going to win this fight. Yeah. Again, this is a good example where meleeing is so important to instantly kill people. Right? Land here, melee her right away. See? If you melee her right now, she dies before the outburst is able to heal her. So you managed to win the fight. I still think you played it poorly, but like this is gold, so everyone makes a ton of mistakes. But if you want to win these games, you'd be better than your peers, right? Like these are all really basic mistakes that you're making consistently. I do not stand ever this far away from the corner. Like if he pops right now, you're forced to use jump, and I don't want to use jump right now. All right, just play the corner. Yeah, this is fine. So I don't want to jump the Zarya. I don't want to jump the Reaper. I don't want to jump the Bastion unless he doesn't have a salt form. Just let them let them step up. Like this, it's okay. Like I don't want to play out here and take a ton of damage right now. Like fighting this this Reaper is a big mistake. But since he is low right now, so Tracer comes in, or rather Soldier comes in, gets them low. Reaper goes off. At this point, I'd be like, okay, good. Now I jump and land up here with the Life Weaver. That should be your goal at this moment in time because your Soldier created an opportunity by flanking. So what happens now? You jump to Narnia. Like, what are we doing over here? <laughs> like, you see how you're not zapping anyone? This is really bad. All right, you can try to here and just about, just about, but don't quite die. You really should be dead here. So you have 90 health right now. You're gonna jump in. But the problem is without bubble, you're gonna get shredded here. You're trying to force down the, the Bastion. But like, again, this is an extremely dangerous position to be in. I don't think this is the right call. I think you saw how low the Bastion is, but that's fine. I can go right by him 
and go after the left side. I think the correct call here is to jump over the wall and go after go after the uh, the life weaver. Alternatively, just go after the brig. Going after the brig here would also be fine. Like do a short jump into the wall, land on the brig, and then focus on the brig. I think diving in this deep, you should really should be dead right now. I guarantee you, if I look at the enemy POV, somebody's missing you by a lot. Oh, just right click him. All right, so they've capped the point. Uh, so your mercy's healing you right now, which is also really bad. You really don't want mercy to be healing you. Uh, I think you should just jump on the the, the brig now, right? She uses whip shot. Great, now I go, right? She whipshots me, I, I jump right in. The Zarya's not looking, right? The Zarya's not looking, I can bubble her off from healing. Like, me plus Mercy plus Brig can kill this Brig. She's really far out of position. Yeah, see? Now it's like a three on four. What are you gonna do? Now, trees popped, I just exit this fight. There's no, you're not winning this fight. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna reset here. Oh, man. You need to jump again. You need to jump again. See, like, even, even this one second fight, one, two, three. He just did 200 damage to you right now, like 220. And now you're forced bubble out. Like, this is really bad. You don't want to fight this. You have no reason to fight this. <laughs> you just need to chill. You don't want to take any damage right now. Remember before, I'm like, oh, it's fine to take damage. It's fine to take damage when you're full health, especially when you're not a dive hero. When you're a poke hero, brawl hero, yeah, take some damage. As a dive hero, you need all of your health. So when you jump in, you're maximum dangerous, right? If you were like half health when you go in, they're just going to focus and kill you or you're not going to accomplish anything. I would not focus the Reaper. This is literally the worst possible person for you to be focusing. All right? So you know where the Bastion is? Great. So keep scouting. Come into the left. Look at where the enemy positions are. Okay, great. So they're right here. Like, they're all trying to fight me right here. Okay, I wait for whip shot. Then I jump in and I dive the Life Weaver. All right? Use uh, Bubble to, to stay alive and then pop Primal when you need to. All right. You identify the Reaper's out of position. Okay, fine. Yeah, this is fine. This is one of the problems playing against Life Weaver. So you have another jump in one second. I don't want to be zapping right now because zapping the Zarya doesn't help me. <laughs> you need to save your ammo. You should be charging your right click and then jumping and trying to initiate on one person. So he goes. At this moment in time, I reload because I have four seconds until I can jump again. I reload, start charging right click, come around the corner. I see the Life Weaver. Now I jump in on the Life Weaver. That's what you should do right now. Going after the Zarya here is a mistake. So you all get problem with them together and you get burned down and then like what's gonna happen here, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're just not doing anything in, in the fights. Like the fact that you're here does not change this fight at all because all you do is you just focus the Zarya for some reason. Like you're zapping too, but Brig is super tanky and the Life Weaver can keep her alive through your healing. Like no problem. You should just go after the Life Weaver here and then you're fine, you're good. But this is a mistake, right? Whole team gets shredded and then that's it. Okay, final point, you're gonna swap Orisa. Are you any good at Orisa? We'll find out. So you're gonna chase down the Bastion. That's good, generally good call because he is, uh, you know, kind of out of position. You pop Fortify here. I don't know that I would do that. Like, I think I would just wait here for another second, right? For me to get Javelin and then step up and kill him with a Javelin. That way you save Fortify. Fortify is a very long cooldown. You should also, uh, well, actually it doesn't, that strike doesn't work anymore, but I said end early. Um, but you should also, uh, try to avoid using Fortify when, unless you absolutely need to. But you've lost two right now, so you're definitely in danger. You cannot chase this Reaper. This is a bad idea. The Reaper is here, the Zarya is here. What is your plan to kill the Reaper? He's just gonna get bubbled. And now what? And now you get shredded and die. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a good plan. Now you need to recognize like, oh, okay, I killed, I killed the, the Bastion, right? I come back, try to play with my team. Oh, lost one. Um, maybe we can turn it, right? Because we just killed one, so maybe we can, we can turn it. Lost two? No, I'm not doing anything, right? At this point in time, I just want to stay alive, right? Stay alive or suicide. Either one is my are, are my options right now, right? If this is a suicide attempt, I guess that's okay, but I don't think you needed to suicide right now. I think you could play it slow, or your soldier could help you, and maybe you actually turn this around. But this was a mistake. All right, regrouping. That's a... Why even bother? <laughs> anyway, you're down two. Regroup. All right, fine. Regroup. Play as five. Yeah, uh, I mean that this javelin's obviously not going. I understand that you're tracking her, but like there's a pillar in front of her. So I think you want to wait here until you get a cleaner javelin. Like don't waste the javelin. It's a relatively low cooldown, but don't like waste it, waste it. All right. So let's think through strategy here for a second. What am I supposed to do here? Well, number one. We're at 75% already. There's almost no way that we're gonna win the fight in the next 
to get another fight after this. Does that make sense? Like, whether or not we cap it at 85 or at 90 or 95 or 99 is irrelevant. Because whatever fight that it... What, if I, assuming I win this fight, it is the last fight, the last loss I can suffer for the entire game. So my perspective should be use all 25% left. To give you a sports analogy here for a second, like, imagine, imagine a basketball game, and I'm down 100 to 99, right? I'm down one point at the very end of the game, and I have 15 seconds left on the clock. So all I need is one basket, any basket, two point, three point, whatever, I win the game. My perspective here is I want to use all 15 seconds left on the clock to try to win. I don't want to take a shot at 15 seconds and hope that I get the ball back again later. <laughs> because with less than 15 seconds, the odds are they're going to be able to run out the clock and I'm never going to get the ball back. So same thing for Overwatch. In this situation, my, my perspective should not be rushed onto the point to try to take the fight as soon as possible. It should be, this is the last fight of the game right? Last loss I can suffer of the game anyway. So I might as well look for opportunities. The best opportunity for you is not to run in right now and take a fight. You should poke people down on the point. Why? The point has no cover. That's the disadvantage of playing on the point. Everyone on the point is vulnerable and your team takes all these angles around the point and shoots at them until somebody dies or at least cooldowns are forced. Then you step onto the point. So do not rush this fight. Right? This is like a core, like, mis like macro level mistake you're making. That javelin's not even close. This is rushing the fight. This spin does literally nothing. You're at full health. The only person attacking you is Mei, who does not do a lot of damage. Okay? And now you're stuck on point with no spin, which means you'd use Fortify as your next ability, which is also bad. You don't want to do this because now you're not going to have like another defensive cooldown. Right? Now you're forced to pop Fortify. This is super bad. Okay, now you're forced back off the point, which is bad. Again, notice 92. You could have just never came onto the point, right? Just poke people down, try to get javelin kills, etc. Give your team time to like potentially get a pick and then step up when you get an actual chance to do something. But instead, you're over here, you're gonna get grabbed. You have no javelin, you've wasted javelin, you've wasted spin, and you've wasted fortify, which means you have no chance of winning this fight. Okay, so. Reviewing the questions. What do you do against against teams that pick tank busters? I mean, like, there are lots of heroes that could kill tanks. <laughs> you know, all, lots of DPS and support heroes can kill tanks. They all have some ability to deal with tanks to be annoying at some level or the other. There's nothing specific about this lineup where I'm like, oh god, they're all tank busters. It's not that bad, right? This is like a pretty regular lineup. The Brig is played to be anti-dive, so as long as you're not dive, you're good, right? The Zarya is really good at neutral, but she's bad if you can either outpoke her or you can out brawl her, right? Or you can out dive her. Like there are there are options depending on what's going on. I think Arisa versus Zarya is playable. Does she have advantage neutral? She does, but it's not overwhelmingly strong. I think Arisa's very strong against Reaper. I think Arisa's very strong against Mei, right? And she's fine against Light Weaver. So like yeah, I think this is a totally winnable situation. I think that you're rushing your timing. You don't know when to engage. You don't know where to engage. And then on Winston, your mechanics are a huge problem. <laughs> Like, they're a big-time problem, and that's really, really, really hurting you. And then when you play Orisa here, nothing here feels like you know what you're... Like, look at your aim right now. Okay, you spun everybody in. Like, at this point, you're committed. Like, I, I'm not leaving the point anymore because I'm not getting off the point successfully, right? In a way that's gonna... Like, if I leave this way, yeah, I might live, but I've given up the point anyway, and we're gonna lose the game. So at this point, I'm, like, 100% committed, so I need to get a kill right now because I already burned spin to get in and Javelin, which makes it almost like you put so much pressure on yourself to try to win the game right now, and it's unnecessary. But at this point, I pop Fortify, and I have to kill someone. Whether it's to be a Reaper, or the Life Weaver, or, or the May, or whomever, someone needs to die right now, or at least force out the cooldowns, or I am I failed my job. So you can just pop Fortify and just kill someone. Right, go after the Reaper, force Wraith, go after the Life Weaver, right? try to force Dash, May, force Block, anything right now. But let's look at what actually ends up happening after you spin in here. So here's a spin in. Okay, great. Kill somebody. All right, you're shooting the bubble. Okay, that's not, not doing anything. You're still shooting the bubble. Now you pop Fortify. Now you're shooting the Zarya, which is literally the worst target. I would note that you're missing 80, 90% of your shots. You see, you're not even targeting anybody right now. You're just holding down the trigger. You literally missed like 10 plus in a row on a point full of, full of enemies. Still lots and lots of missing. Okay, now we're shooting the, the, the wall, which I think is fine, I guess. All right, you have to get back to the point anyway. All right, you break the wall. Okay, great. But now, you open with Javelin, but like, who are you even aiming at? The, the Zarya? The Zarya's not going to die anyway if you hit with Javelin. Just save it. Right? Maze in your face. She pops block. 
right? You could go after the May right now. You could have potentially, I, I do not think you should use spin right now because you're at full health. You want to save spin here to potentially shut down grab, okay? Because you've not seen the Zarya grab in forever. So if you try to save spin here for grab, that would be huge. Like you don't need spin right now. It's not like you're about to die. You're like, oh God, I'm getting shot by the Reaper. I need to pop spin. Like you're just kind of wasting all of your abilities all the time. That's your core issue. <laughs> like, forget everything else about who the right pick is or whatever. You're playing really suboptimally with all of your hero picks. That should be your takeaway from this game, not, oh god, they have a tank-busting lineup. All right, I'm going to stop there. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, I do recommend that you watch, I mean, forget the Sigma stuff, but watch my Winston guides. Uh, watch the Winston jump video done by Carq. It's really, really good. Um, watch uh, the Arissa guide that I have as well. I think there's a lot of really good resources out there for you. To, to help you out.